So snacking kind of has a bad rep and yeah. I kind of want to deal with maybe snacking and intermittent fasting here in the same, uh, mm-hmm. you know, sentence. So intermittent fasting, the typical protocol that's pushed online is this 18 hour fasting period with a six hour feeding period to get that cellular autophagy and all those benefits. And then snacking, I think almost in the same sentence has been demonized. Well, my understanding from reading some of your work is that snacking isn't entirely bad at certain periods in the day. It's more just in that last meal of the day or, you know, post eight o'clock that snacking becomes quite toxic to our health and longevity goals. Yeah. So we've done quite a bit of work looking at snacking. And I think snacking is something really important because 95% of people snack. On average, we have two and a half snacks a day if you're a snacker. And 25% of calories on average comes from snacks in the UK. That's huge. That's a quarter of our calories. And if we put that into the context of how many calories come from our evening meal, it's pretty similar. And people spend a lot of time thinking about how they can have a healthy evening meal, what they can add in, et cetera. But actually, our snacks that we have throughout the day account for just the same amount of energy. So If we can focus on the quality of the snacks and eating healthy snacks, we can go a really huge way to improving our health. And the research that we did tried to look at a couple of really important questions related to snacking. Does the frequency of snacking matter? Is it all about the quality or is it about the timing? And so there is this question about, oh, you shouldn't snack. We should go back to the three main meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, our ancestors didn't snack, although you know, there is the hunter-gatherer from before that. So I think it's kind of varied, uh, you know, through history. What our research shows is that having multiple snacks or another term we use for this is multiple eating events. So eating or grazing throughout the day, as long as you're grazing on healthy food and grazing when you're hungry rather than out of habit, then our research shows that there is no detrimental effect on your health. It's if you're not listening to your hunger signals and if you're eating or grazing, snacking on unhealthy foods, that's where the problem arises. And the problem is, is that the majority of snacks that people eat are higher in unhealthy saturated fats, higher in salt, higher in sugar, higher in refined carbohydrates. They tend to be lower in fiber, lower in heart healthy oils um, and stripped of a lot of the kind of bioactive nutrients that makes food so special. So chemicals like polyphenols that you know have great uh, properties in terms of improving our health. And so we need to be mindful about the kind of snacks we're having, but I think not so much worrying about ha- having snacks between meals. But what our research did show is that snacking late in the evening So particularly if you snacked after nine o'clock and we found a huge proportion of people do snack after nine o'clock. I think culturally that's kind of where we've gone to, isn't it? Where people chill out in the evening and watch Netflix and they might have, you know, an ice cream or a popcorn or crisps or something with that. Yeah. So interestingly, we actually found that the, the kind of food people were snacking on after nine was more unhealthy than the kind of snacks people were having before nine o'clock, you know, yeah. w- which confirms, you know, exactly what you're saying that, you know, sitting in front of Netflix, having some crisps, a bit of chocolate, etc. So firstly, people are snacking on slightly less healthy snacks later in the evening. But we also know that eating whether it's snacking your main meal later in the evening for most people is not the healthiest way to eat. And this is because there's a growing understanding among scientists of what we call um, your circadian rhythm, so circadian biology. And a really simple way to explain this is that every cell in our body has its own clock. And so all of the cells that are dealing with how we metabolize food have their own clock as well. And that clock is primed to work better for some things at some times of the day versus other times of the day. Well, that makes perfect sense because when I've traveled long haul, I felt that urge to eat breakfast or lunch at a bizarre time that was local, but it was actually my native time to be eating breakfast or lunch back home. Yeah. So it's interesting. There's two main things that control our circadian rhythm. So it will control the the clocks in, in all of these cells. One is the light dark cycle. And the other is the timing that we eat our food. So what you'll find is some people that travel a lot for business, but only maybe are going for, you know, a 24-hour period or something, they might, they can't control the light-dark cycle within reason. Um, and so what they can control, though, is trying to maintain eating at the same time that they would have been eating back at home, so that therefore they're keeping largely their circadian clock 
on rhythm with their typical pattern so that when they come back, it's less that, you know, they have less jet lag, um, which is a, an interesting thing to try. I'm, I'm going to Vancouver on Sunday, I, but I'm there for four days. I don't think I can be eating in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting group to study would be pilots. I have a couple of friends yeah. who are pilots and their dietary habits, they they baffle me. Like their sleep and dietary habits are just so much of an outlier compared to the general population. Yeah, so there's a whole lot of research around shift workers for that same reason, that they're having maybe three or four days a week where they're eating in one kind of time zone. And then they're having, you know, two or three days a week where they're eating in a different time zone. And we actually know that for shift workers, there's a really high rate of cardiovascular disease, of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Now, that's in part because of the food that many shift workers eat. So it is known that many shift workers don't have as healthy a diet as non-shift workers, non-night shift workers, because of access to food at certain times of the night but also independent to the type of food that we're eating because they're eating, um, you know, out of sync with their circadian uh, clock, so with their body clock, we know that that's also unfavourable for their health. 